<laughs> you should have had that recorded. I think you have more fun than me. <laughs> Trying to build this so way. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's something. Yep. Oh, yeah, it's a little bike. Is that a shiner or chub or what? That was the shiner, the okay. minnow. Okay. My battery's getting low. Trying to fast too. Is it even a keeper? I don't think so. Look at him. Nah, he's probably about 23. Chill out. Still working for the contest, though? Huh? Will they still count for the contest? Not if it's undersized. Yeah.
it's cold. Oh man, that water's real cold. Show you my setup real quick. I think this is the best setup you can use for pike fishing, but that's just my opinion. It's just a standard wooden tip up that folds up with these wing nuts. And I use black Dacron tip up line. Probably 30 pound, 20 to 40 pound test. And then for my hook, let's see here. I just use a small, uh, regular hook, not a treble hook. I think that's uh, maybe a number four or number six, not very big, with a black, thin black steel leader, one, uh, right around a, uh, right around a quarter ounce sinker, just to keep the minnow down, and then up above the leader, I put one of these little uh, tip-up bobbers on it. And that just keeps the minnow, the the bobber, and the sinker combo keeps the minnow uh, sitting upright. That way, even if he's dead, he'll still work for bait. And that's it. That's all you need to catch pike. Uh, when it comes to ice fishing, the the less fancy you get, the better. And that's just a six inch hole that we drilled with an auger. Here's another tip. You can take it or leave it. But if you hook your shiner right in front of the dorsal fin, He'll sit upright and uh, don't go in very deep. Just go in about an eighth of an inch into his uh, back, right at the front of his dorsal fin, and he'll stay nice and lively for you. Just like that. Shiner, leader, sinker, and bobber. And when you uh, bring in a fish, like I just did, you want to go hand over hand with that line and let it spread all the way out across the ice. And try not to let it overlap on itself and it won't get tangled up on you. And you always want to keep a pair of needle nose pliers. That's it. I'm all set up, ready to go. What I do is I get uh, 12 to 25 feet of water because that's where the weed line ends and I fish from one third to two thirds of the way down. And if that doesn't work, I switch it up. I might drop it all the way on the bottom or I might bring it up uh, just three foot under the ice, but typically between one third and two thirds the depth of the water is good. So if I'm in, uh, if I'm in 21 feet of water, I will fish between 7 and 14 feet deep. And uh, that usually catches pike here in southern Michigan. Hopefully bigger ones than that last one though. We'll see. I'm gonna try my new hobo stove out while I'm out here. This one's just got a hole cut in the front of it to feed wood in. Let's 
seems to work but it's not nearly as wind resistant as the other one I made Yep, there's one on there, probably another little one. Yep, even smaller. Not even hooked. Not even hooked. Oh yeah, I guess he is. He's just barely hooked in the mouth. That's all. He's off. And I got my middle too. Oh, he's trying to back down the hole, see if he can do it. I've never been seen him be able to do that before. I'll give him a hand there, but <laughs> Got, looks like he's got a bite mark on him or something there. Still alive, too. I only have forty seconds of video left. There's one more. Fire on water. Flags, where's the fish? It's definitely cooking now. Be stew.
get some more wood. Yeah, that's the last of the wood right there. Enough to make uh, oatmeal, hot chocolate, and beef stew. And I might be able to boil some more water, or at least heat it up and make those. I got a little thing of ramen noodles I was going to eat.